and welcome to our science lesson. We have been able to start up on heat in our previous lesson and we discussed a few aspects to do with heat and how it flows from one point to the other. Now, we also went ahead to calculate the amount of heat required which we called the heat capacity heat capacity heat capacity now heat capacity we were able to define it as that specific amount of heat that you are going to require in order for you to change the uh, temperature of a given mass of an object or a given mass of a body by one degree centigrade that you are changing the temperature by one degree celsius or even the kelvin by one kelvin just to remind you therefore it is the amount of heat of heat energy required to change amount of heat energy required to change the temperature of a given mass of an object by one degree Celsius or even one Kelvin, if you may. That amount that will change the temperature whether it is raising or lowering, remember that we said when we were looking at work, power, energy, and machine, we said that energy cannot be produced, it cannot be destroyed. It can only be used to change from one form to the other, and that way we can be able to put it into different uh, uses. Now, today we want to look at specific heat capacity. Now, I would hate that you uh, confuse the two because heat capacity in itself, capital C, does not does not emphasize on a unit mass heat capacity in itself does not uh, emphasize on a unit mass but rather it only talks about changing wholesomely the whole mass that you have you change its temperature by one degree celsius or by one Kelvin. Now, specific heat capacity, like the name suggests, is a bit specific. Specific heat capacity is a bit specific in the sense that it is now, it is the amount of heat energy required to raise the temperature of a unit mass of a body by one degree Celsius or one Kelvin. Now, 
look at this, that it's the amount of energy, yes, the amount of heat energy. But now this time the task ahead is to raise the temperature of a unit mass. A unit mass. So now we narrow down to a unit mass of a body and that uh, rise is supposed to be one degree Celsius or even one Kelvin. That is why we call it specific heat capacity. Now we are going to call it C. Again we are going to call it C this time in the lower case. C in the lower case. Specific heat capacity C in the lower case. Remember our heat capacity was in the upper case. This time we want it in lower case. Now let us come up with a formula for the same. Now, heat capacity or specific heat capacity is given by heat capacity divided by mass. Heat capacity divided by mass. Remember our heat capacity was given by Q all over delta theta where Q is the amount of energy required. Delta theta is the change in temperature. Now we are uh, dividing this by mass. We are dividing that by mass. Now, we have our specific heat capacity, which is C in the lower case, being equal to heat capacity divided by mass. Why by mass? Because we have said, now we want that amount of energy that will change the temperature of a unit mass. Heat capacity took into consideration the whole mass of the body whose temperature was to be interfered with. Now we have it and we want to know, yes, this is the amount of energy we require to change the given mass by one degree Celsius. How about if we narrow down to only one unit mass? That is why now we bring in the aspect of dividing by mass. Now, therefore, it will be theta all Q over delta theta multiplied by 1 over M, meaning that C is equal to Q over change in temperature, and we multiply this by mass. Now, in other words, if we come from the point of view of the specific heat capacity, we can arrive at our energy by multiplying C, which is our specific heat capacity, change in temperature and mass to give us the required energy. This one is the definition. By the way, it is also correct to give definitions in symbol form, like in a formula of this nature, but you have to remember to indicate what each parameter stands for. So now you could say that where Q is actually the heat energy, Q is the heat energy. Now C is the specific heat capacity. Uh, M is the mass 
and finally delta theta is the temperature change. Now, temperature change. That specific heat capacity, you multiply it by the change in temperature and the mass whose temperature has been changed should give you the amount of energy. Now, let us look at an example. Let us look at an example. Let us look at an example. Let us take this example on the board. It reads, a block of metal of mass 1.5 kgs, which is suitably insulated. It is insulated to ensure that there are no losses of energy. That is the point that is going to be achieved by insulating our block. A block of metal of mass 1.5 kgs is suitably insulated and uh, then it's heated from 30 degrees centigrade to 50 degrees centigrade in 8 minutes and 20 seconds by an electrical heater coil which is rated 54 watts. Now we are required to find, number one, the heat uh, 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 supplied to the heater. The heat supplied to the heater. But first, first things first, let us look at what the question gives us. 
uh, for the solution, we could talk about mass has been given as 1.5 kgs. Uh, change in temperature, it's from 30 to 50, so 50 minus 30 to give us 20 degrees centigrade. We also have a provision of time, which is 8 minutes, 20 seconds. And then we have the power. We have the power, which is 54 watts. Now let us go through the question. This is what we have. Let us calculate what is required of us. And part A is the quantity of heat supplied. Quantity of heat supplied. Remember that energy in itself is given by power times time. Power times time. But the, at this point in time, we are integrating different parameters. Now, for that reason, it is always fair to make sure that everything you are working with is in its SI units. Now, like for example, our power is in SI unit, but the time is given in minutes and seconds. We have to change it to seconds, which is our SI unit. So we, which is 8 times 60 plus 20. Now all of these are going to be seconds. So 8 times 60 is 480 plus 20 will give us 500 seconds. So we can go ahead and calculate amount of heat supplied. We can go ahead and calculate the amount of heat supplied. And uh, amount of heat in this case is the energy that we are working with. So we are justified to take our power and multiply by time in seconds. So we take our power which is 54 watts. We multiply by 500 seconds. And this one gives us an energy of this one gives us an energy of 54 times 500 which is 27,000 joules. 27,000 joules. You take power, multiply by time, but make sure every variable that you work with is in its SI unit so that whatever comes out of your calculation is correct also in its SI unit. Now, there is a part B of, a, of the, the same question, which is the heat. Now, rec remember that now we have calculated the heat supplied, and we have found it to be 27,000 joules. So we can also add it onto our list. Now, the next thing is the heat capacity. Heat capacity of the block. Heat capacity of the block. And the heat capacity of our block is now going to be our capital C which is given by Q 
you divide by change in temperature. That our heat capacity Q over change in temperature is what is going to give us the heat capacity. We have already calculated the heat supplied to be 27,000 joules. And this one we are dividing by change in temperature, which is 20 degrees centigrade. And this one gives us 20 degrees us. <coughs> A heat capacity of 1,350 uh, joules per Kelvin. Joules per Kelvin. Joules per Kelvin. Now, therefore, we can also add it onto our list. Capital C is 1,350 joules per kelvin now part c is its specific heat capacity its specific heat capacity part c requires us to get the specific heat capacity specific heat capacity, which we uh, wrote as uh, small c, c in the lowercase. And we said that c is given by capital C divided by mass. Capital C is our heat capacity. For us to arrive at specific heat capacity, we have to consider the heat capacity and we divide by the mass and this one from our list of parameters we have calculated it to be 1350 joules per kelvin and this one we are dividing by 1.5 kgs and this one gives us Nine hundred joules per kg per Kelvin per kg joules per Kelvin per kg. Now I want to look at yet another example. Yet another example of the same nature.
We have yet another question, and uh, the question reads, find the final temperature of water if a heater coil rated 42 watts heats 50 grams of water from 20 degrees in 5 minutes. And the specific heat capacity is given as 4200 joules per kilogram Kelvin. Let us collect what is there. The information that we have from our question is that the power of the heater is 42 watts. 42 watts. Now, the time is five minutes, which we are going to change to seconds by multiplying by 60. This gives us 300 seconds. Then we have initial temperatures initial temperatures being equal to 20 degrees centigrade. We are also given the specific heat capacity as 4200 joules per kilograms Kelvin. I think that's about all. Now, we are interested in the final uh, temperature, but now the, the change in temperature is what we do not know. Probably, if we know by how much uh, have we raised the temperature of this water, we could also be in a position to get the final temperature. But mass mass has also been given as 50 grams 50 grams in our case is going to be 0 0.05 change in temperature is what we are looking for mass is given by 0. Point zero five kgs now there is something we are supposed to assume here for us to be able to work out this example we must assume that actually there was no loss whatsoever of heat to the environment that way the heat supplied can be uh, the same as the heat that is gained by water. Now, from what we have, from what we have, we can probably start by looking at heat supplied. Heat supplied is going to be given by power times the time. Now we have our power as 42 watts and the time is 300 seconds. And now from that we can manage to get the power supplied as 42 times 300 to give us 12,600 joules. That is the power, that is the energy that we have at our disposal. But heat gained, it gained is equal to mass we multiply by change in temperature and we multiply by specific heat capacity each of which 
we have been given, each of which we have been given, so that now our mass is, uh, sorry, we substitute, we substitute for what we have in the equation, so that now our heat gained becomes 12, 600, these ones are joules, remember this one is energy, mass is 0 0.05, those ones are kgs. Now, specific heat capacity is what we, call, we have as for 42,000. And the change in temperature, the change in temperature is delta theta. Is it okay? I'm an erudition. I'm sorry, what? Ten is given by 0 0.05 kgs. 0 0.05. We multiply by specific heat capacity and then we multiply by change in temperatures. Now, remember that we don't have the change in temperature is what we are looking for. So zero Let us work that one out. We say this one is going to give us 210 delta theta. We quit that one to the left hand side of our equation, which is 12,000 and 12,000. Uh, 600, we can divide by 210, both sides, we divide by 210, so that change in temperature is going to be given by 12,600, divide by 210, which is going to yield 60, 60 degrees centigrade. Now, this is the change in temperature. This is the change in temperature, but final temperature should be given by initial temperature plus the change in the same. Therefore, we had our initial temperature as 20. We add the change that has resulted and the final temperature should be given by T, which is 80 degrees Celsius. That you start from the heat supplied, the heat supplied, you will arrive at it by taking your power and multiplying it by the time you have been given. Note that everything that you are working with must be in SI units. That is why we took trouble to change our five minutes to six to, uh, to 300 seconds by multiplying by 60. That one we multiplied by our power and we resulted at 12,600 joules as our energy that is uh, supplied by our heater coil. Now, but assuming there are no losses of energy to the environment, 
we were able to equate the heat gained by the water to the heat supplied by the heater coil. In other words, we took the amount of energy supplied and we assumed that all of it was actually absorbed by our water. In that case, we went back to our equation of specific heat capacity and we equated it to the energy supplied so that now we worked out our change in temperature at 60 degrees centigrade. Adding that to our initial temperature, we ended up at 80 degrees centigrade as our final temperature. Let us look at a final example. Example 3. Example number three. Example three. Use of copper. A piece of copper of mass 60 grams and specific heat capacity of the 390 joules per kilogram Kelvin cools from 90 to 40 degrees Celsius and we are required to get the amount of energy that has been given out. But we know that energy is given by mass, specific heat capacity, and change of temperature multiplied together. Now, in this case, heat is being given out. And we said, assuming that we have no losses to the environment, then heat given out should be the same amount of heat that is absorbed into the environment. Therefore, we could first look at the information we have been given and we can collect uh, the variables. We have the mass as 60 grams. Again, we change this to kilograms to 0 0.06 kgs. Then, again, we have specific heat capacity given as 390 joules per kilograms Kelvin. And again, we have our change of temperature being 90 minus 40. In this case, we have 
a difference of 50 degrees centigrade. Now, let us feed this information into our formula. Let us feed this into our formula. Substitute for the values in your formula so that now mass becomes 0 0.06. We multiply this by 390 and we multiply that by 50 so that now we have we have 0 0.06 multiplied by 390 multiplied by 50 gives us 1170 and this is energy therefore joules 1170 and in this case they are joules because that is the energy that has been given out. Now, we can also talk about methods of determining specific heat capacity. We can talk about methods of determining methods of determining specific cap heat capacity and basically we have around four i will start with what we call the method of mixture we have the method of mixture we have mechanical method method of mixture, mechanical method. We have electrical method. And finally, we have continuous flow. But when it comes to the determination of specific heat capacity, we have four methods of determining the same at our disposal. I have enumerated them as method of mixture. We have mechanical method, electrical method, and continuous flow method. Probably, we could say something about method of mixture about method of mixture. Now, in this case, you have a mixture of different things which will have different specific heat capacities, some of whom uh, the specific heat capacity is known. Now, you are supposed to work from those unknowns all from those knowns so that you can come up with the specific heat capacity of the unknown. But most importantly, it is good to understand that heat lost is always equal to heat gained. Heat lost is always equal to the heat gained. Now, unless you have a specific figure of the amount of heat that you are advised to take or to treat as the amount of energy that has been lost to the environment, 
then the assumption that should always linger in your mind should be that heat lost is equal to the heat gained. Now, you will have different things interacting and their heat capacity, specific heat capacity is going to be informed by the changes that happen in as far as the energy or the heat energy is concerned. Now, I want us to take an example. I want us to take an example. Example. Yeah, we look at our question. It reads a lagged uh, copper calorimeter of mass 0 0.75 contains 0 0.9 kgs of water at 20 degrees centigrade. Now, a bolt whose mass has been given as 0 0.8 kgs is transferred from an oven at 400 degrees centigrade into the contents of the calorimeter and the final temperature achieved is 50 degrees centigrade. Now, what we are interested in is now the specific heat capacity of the material that has been used to make the bolt. Now, having been given the specific heat capacity of copper to be 400 
uh, joules per kilogram Kelvin and that of water to be 4200. Now, we want to look at the information at our disposal. You really have to be very careful when you are collecting this information. It's quite substantial. Now, number one is the mass. Mass of the calorimeter, which is given as 0 0.75 kgs. Then we have mass of the bolt given us 0 0.9 kgs. Not the bowl, but water. Water. Then mass of the bolt is given as 0 0.8 kgs. Now, in issue of uh, temperature, all the temperature change is going to be 400, 400, that is of the bolt, 400 uh, minus 50, which will give us 350. Uh, temperature change of the calorimeter will be 20 to 50, therefore 50 minus 20, which gives us 30 uh, degrees centigrade. And then change of the temperature of the water is equally 30 degrees centigrade. Again, we have been given the specific heat capacity of copper to be 400 joules per kilogram Kelvin and the specific heat capacity of water has been given as 42,000 or 4,200, 4,200 joules per kilogram Kelvin. No. Recall that heat gained or let us say heat lost is equal to heat gained please water therefore the heat that has been lost is mass of the bolt times uh, the specific heat capacity of the bolt times the change of temperature change of temperature of the bolt now is going to be equal is going to be equal to 0 0.8 multiply by specific heat capacity and we multiply this by 350 which is our change and this one is going to result to 280 uh, C, C for our specific heat capacity. Now heat gained by calorimeter, heat by the calorimeter is going to be the mass of the calorimeter, which is 0 0.75. We multiply this by the specific heat capacity of the, the material, which is 400. And this one we multiply by temperature change, which is going to, to be 30. And this one yields 9,000 joules. Now, heat gained by water, heat gained by water is going to be with the mass of water, which is 0 0.9 kgs. We multiply by specific heat capacity of water, and this one 
we multiply by the change in temperature. And this one gives us 113,400 joules. Now, but heat gained, heat gained is equal to the heat lost by the bolt. So we equate 280C to the sum of 9,000 joules added to 113. 400 joules and this one gives us 122 400 joules is equal to 280 multiplied by the specific heat capacity of the material of the bolt. Now, what then is the value of C? Therefore, C is going to be 122,400 divided by 280 and the specific heat capacity is going to be 132,400 divided by 280 and it's going to give us 437 point one four three those are joules per kilograms kelvin now we have been able to look at how different materials interacting uh, in terms of heat gain and heat loss could uh, result in uh, the calculation of specific heat capacity i hope to give you more examples when next we meet but that's about all for today Next time we meet, we'll look at more examples, expound more on the methods of determination of specific heat capacity, and probably we can advance to a notch higher. Thank you.